Online, we thank you for tuning in today. So important. Hallelujah. I, I mean, realize there's just not a lot of difference in a hillbilly and a redneck. You know, seriously, I, I'm a hillbilly. That's where I'm from, the hills of North Alabama. And I got here and I connected with rednecks and I'm very culturally driven. But I, I know that uh, when you say certain words, they mean certain things to certain people. And uh, I would just tell you that, that medically right now, the medical field, and I know this is going to sound uh, calloused, but there, the medical field is making billions of dollars right now. Oh, they are racking up. I mean, test after test after test after test. Amen. And, and I think they're just eating this moment up because science and medical finally have their moment in the sun. And, uh, and again, not to be mean, because I know we got a nurse in the house and others that, that work in it, but they, it is. It's huge money right now to get to where you're at. And uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. I think sometimes things need to be said. But let me just mention this real quick. Uh, Mike, if, if I'm at it, uh, and I found this, I thought it's kind of good because sometimes words, we don't understand exactly what they mean. And for rednecks and for hillbillies, they may sound a little bit different. There's some medical definitions for rednecks. Benign. Benign is what a child be after eight. <laughs> you, have to, you have to say it in such a way to help us rednecks and hillbillies understand. Cauterize. To have gotten noticed by a woman. I caught her eyes. Come on now. Y'all need to laugh today just a little bit. Oh, I've heard this word quite a bit. Cyst. That means to give someone in need a helping hand. I just want to, I just want to give you, I want to assist you. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm doing this for you rednecks out there because I know when you go to the doctor, you don't often understand when they're explaining things to you. Uh, uh, dilate. Sure beats dying early. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Hallelujah. Oh, how about that? How about that node? Yeah, that means to have been acquainted with someone in the past. I knowed you from somewhere. When I saw Ohio over here, I thought I knowed him. A pathology, of course, is the study of trails. Amen, pathology. And if you're a hillbilly and a redneck, you understand about trails. You know, there's certain places that you go down through. I could take you to Alabama and take you to up where a crooked oak. Hallelujah. Back in the woods there and have to give you some study on pathology. Now, I know I might get a little trouble with this one, so I'm going to say it real fast. Wrecked them. Crashed them and totaled them. <laughs> Amen. Where I'm from, you wrecked them. That's what you did. You totaled them. You, you crashed that thing. Amen. Probably the one thing I, I fear the most is the pap smear. Yeah, that's to insult or belittle your own father. That's just terrible. When you smear your pappy, that's a terrible thing to do. All right, let's get over to Philippians real quick. Words. Everybody say words. Words are so important. Faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So when you hear today and you hear the word faith, faith builds up in you when you hear preaching. That's why you came today. Because faith is actually the opposite of fear. Can I get an amen? When I walk about faith, when I'm walking through the word of God, I think about Moses coming up on the Red Sea. By faith, he crossed the Red Sea. You go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. You read, by faith, certain people did certain things. When David faced Goliath, it builds faith in you that you can overcome the bigger obstacles in life. When you think about Noah building the ark in order to rescue the planet, all these things are about faith. Gideon and 300 crackpots going out against the Midianites after seven years of tyranny. Amen. Faith. Everybody say faith. Faith is such a powerful thing. And so when you come and you hear the word of God, you get faith. Everybody say faith. What faith does in you, it dispels or pushes away fear. So I'm talking to my pastor this morning and I realize the latest word that we're hearing from the medical world is don't gather for Thanksgiving or Christmas because it could be a super spreader. Why is that? Because super spread means it can spread a virus and fear among people. Well, I want to welcome you to church today to a super spreader. Amen. Welcome to a place of faith where you'll get faith and you can go out and dispel the fear in other people's lives. So the truth of the matter is, that's what we're doing. We are spreading the faith and the Word of God. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. Listen, guys, you got to decide your life. you got to decide how you're going to live. The word trust is such a powerful word. My message today is pretty simple. You can't trust God and worry too. You can't. It's impossible to trust God and worry too. You can't do it. So I hear people say all the time, well, I worry about this, I worry about that. Listen to me. Worry is a terrible thing to fall into. 
It's a terrible thing to fall into that. And you can't trust God. And I'm going to walk you through this. But the reason a lot of people don't trust God is they know about God. They don't know God. And when you don't know God, then you realize that yeah, I can't trust him. So we fall into the medical field. We fall into science. We fall, and I'm not against it. I'm just telling you that what I'm here, our politicians, I did not vote you into the office to tell me how to live my life. I voted you in to take care of the potholes, to take care of our policemen, to take care of our firemen, amen, and learn how to spend our tax money properly. I didn't vote you in to tell me how to live. Amen. I know how to live. I know how to take care of myself. Hallelujah. I've been doing it for 59 years. It'll be 60 here in a few weeks. Glory to God. Didn't think I'd get this old. That house of God is looking better and better all the time because I'm getting closer and closer. Amen to what David was saying. The word trust seemed to me to place a bold confidence in, care of, to rely on sure security. Let me say trust again. To place a bold confidence in. I have trust in God. Amen. I saw what he's done in my future. Amen. In my past, I know what he'll do in my future. Amen. Bold confidence in care of. He cares for me. He cares for you. I rely on him. He's sure security. Amen. He's awfully generous to us. Can I get an amen? So again, you got to decide your life. you got to discover what's God's desire for your life. Give your dream to God. Focus your faith on Him. Steward your lifestyle. Learn how to steward your life. This thing about worry becomes an addiction in your life. It's, uh, it's self-defeating. It's negative. Thoughts that run through your mind makes you anxious, disturbed, upset, stressed, that hold us back in life. You know, I talk with quite a few pastors during the week. And I have found out that in life, in life particularly, if you're hearing about faith and believe in God for the best, you'll live a better life. But if you're watching the news, and again, I kick it on just a little bit to find out what y'all are, are picking up on. My God in heaven. It's wonder we're not all dead. Amen. Because they just keep pumping it out and pumping it out and pumping it out. And I'm thinking, how much more can you keep here? You're still, you got a cold. You had a sinus issue. <laughs> then you got a cold. <laughs> And then, you, and then if you stayed with it long enough, you'd get, you'd get what they call the flu. And then you'd get the pneumonias, right? That's what you get. Now you get the sniffles, and anything past that's COVID. Anything past that. Amen. And it's cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Amen. To keep people in fear. And I'm, I'm not telling you that it's not bad that folk, folk don't die from Folk die from all kind of stuff. But I've done less funerals during the pandemic than I've ever done in 30-something years of ministry. And I say, God, what's happened here? Why ain't folk dying? Not that I'm in the business of it, but I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. And I know it's only, I'm not here just to make you laugh. You laugh, that's good. But most of you are going to hate me when it's all this over. Because you're going to have to make your mind up. You're going to live by faith. You're going to trust God. Or you're going to live the rest of your life in fear. When you get this addiction, amen, when it runs through your mind, you're depressed, concerned, fearful about everything, especially the future. You spend time with other warriors. You don't want to be around people like me. I will drive you nuts. Amen. I will mess you up. Because I can't live in that kind of life. So you've got to be around other people that will pump in the same fear that you're dealing with right now to magnify it and make you feel better about yourself. You continually wake up, amen, your mind won't shut up. Amen. At night, you continually go to the worst case scenario. As soon as you hear about it, go you're straight to the worst case. Is it this? Is it that? You, you, you go there. Let me tell you what the scripture says. Philippians 4, 6. Are you comfortable? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and with the peace of God, and the peace of God, and the peace of God, which transcends all your thinking, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The message says it this way. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worry and pray. Let petitions and praise shape your worries and prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. Settle you down. Hmm. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Did you know that the old adage is, I, you know why I worry? Because I, I, I'm concerned about you. I love Because I love you. I worry about you. Because Listen. That ain't what the Bible teaches. The Bible says, if, you, if you're concerned about me, you pray for me. Don't worry about me. Worry will wear you out. Worry will take life off of you. Worry will de we begin to hurt your health. That's what worry does. To so quit worrying about people. Start praying for people. Amen. Well, I just worry. Oh, I pray for you. I pray for 
you. Amen. I pray that you will find the peace of God. I pray that faith will displace fear in your life. I pray that love in God, will, you'll get to know him. Because right now, I don't think you know him. You're so scared about everything. Get to know him. Amen. He's the lover of your soul. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Be seated there on, on your reckon. <laughs> Ray, some of you got that. <laughs> amen. The word anxious simply means in the Greek language to be divided or distracted. Have you realized how many things you keep trying to take your focus away? Amen, you focus away. You came here today to refocus. Everybody say refocus. Amen, you ain't got time or the energy to live life always distracted. The Latin word literally means adds uh, choking or strangling. It's like drowning or gasping for air, overwhelmed. Amen, it's amazing to me how anxious and fear is the same thing as this uh, virus. It brings the gasping for air, be overwhelmed. Amen, again, the word in German is the word worgen, which chokes, strangles out life. Amen. It's mental, emotional, spiritual strangulation. Why is it wrong? I'll show you why it's wrong. Amen. First, anxiety or worry highlights the human, strangles the divine. It, ha- it, it tells you almost to forget that there's a God. It always reminds you that I'm, I'm just human. Amen. I'm just human the way I am. Amen. Makes us fearful. Second, it chokes out our ability to distinguish the incidental for the essential. Amen. What is really essential here? Third, it twists so many worries around our hearts that we cannot relax. We become unfruitful like an octopus with tentacles wrapping around our common sense and dragging us into a pit of despair. And again, I'm not trying to demean anybody who's trying to take care of your health or look after yourself, but I'm telling you that if you don't have faith, you're going to live a tragic life. Amen. Faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. Amen. And when I hear it, it tells me, don't be anxious for, for anything, but by prayer and supplication, let my prayers be known to God. Amen. I, I need to talk to Him. Listen, a day of worry is more exhausting than a day of work. Whoo. Amen. I always worry. You know, I, I, I posted this, and it's funny how when I did, people only picked up on the food part of it. But 70% of all patients who come to physicians could cure themselves if they could get rid of their fears, worries, and bad eating habits. And it's funny, when I threw that up there, only thing people thought about was, don't talk about the way I eat. I'm not worried about the way you eat. Amen. You eat the way you want. I'm concerned about you being worried all the time. You being anxious all the time. Amen. You missing up stuff there. Matthew chapter 6 goes into what Jesus was talking about. And again, break it down. Jesus is dealing with, with people that have uh, uh, small homes, probably two sets of clothes. They, they catch fish every day to eat every day. In other words, they don't have the refrigeration issues, amen, to make things last. They'd have to, to uh, dry their food or, or uh, salt their food or something of that nature in order to have it. So they don't have what we have. You know, I've got two refrigerators and a freezer somewhere on the property full of deer meat. And it's filling up. Thank you, James. By faith. I'll just say that by faith. Amen. Nothing's happened yet, but by faith, I'm believing God. That's why you don't post this stuff on Facebook, man. When I see it, I think, thank you, Jesus. I know who your pastor is. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food? Well, I thought life was food, Jesus. I thought life was clothes, Jesus. I I thought life was my body, Jesus. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store up in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. I'm going to read a little bit more that's on the overhead. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire pit, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you have little faith. You need faith. So do not worry. Say, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans, those that don't know God, run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow is going to take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. It's a human problem we got. This thing worrying. Amen. 
I tell you, do not worry about your life. Don't worry about your basic needs. Worry, my friend, is to consume in thought, to establish as our first interest, mental preoccupation, priority concern, fretting, fear of the unknown, and to rehearse a future which you have no control. Well, I just, I think about, you know, I do it for my kids, I do it with my grandkids, and then I got to back away and say, hold on, I got to take care of today. Tomorrow's got enough trouble for itself. Amen. And I got to believe God for my life like they got to believe God for their life. Can I get an amen? See, what Jesus is saying is the reason we don't trust God is simply because we don't know him. And he's trying to explain it to us. He said, listen, do you not realize that God takes care of the, the birds? Do you not realize that God takes care of the flowers? Do you not realize? So you got to get to know him. And our problem in our world today is that people know about God, but they don't know God. They don't realize how generous God is. Amen. I, I, the air I breathe, the friends I have, the family I love, the home I live in, it's all a gift from God. Amen. Everything that happens, it's just God's gift to me. Look at John chapter 2. Let me just share something with you maybe you've not picked up on. On the third day of a wedding, it took place at Canaan, Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. She, see, here's our pro, one of our problems. One of our problems is that somehow we've got started getting taught that holiness was, t- was keeping the rules. Oh, I just got to keep the rules. If I keep the rules, that, that's not, you're missing it. This is about relationship. Great love toward God equals strong resistance towards sin. The more I love him, the more I know him, I just don't want to do it no more. Amen. So here's Jesus. He shows up at a wedding. When the wine, everybody say the grape juice. I mean, no, it wasn't grape juice. It was wine. It's totally different here. They drank wine. I just want to throw that at you, okay? I know some of you, you can't think of wine without thinking of being drunk. Not everybody thinks like you. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me, Jesus replied. My hour's not yet come. It's not time for me to kick in here, but mama's talking. So his mother said to the service, do whatever he tells you. And the original bootlegger, moonshiner, did this. He, this had to be the best hooch there ever was. <laughs> Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding about 20, 30 gallons. So I'm going to call them 30 gallons. Jesus said to his servants, fill the 30 gallons with water. So they filled them to the brim. To the top. My cup won't hold. Then he told them, now draw some and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tested the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew. And he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first. And then the cheaper wine after the guest have had too much to drink. Now, I'm just going to lay this out there because I haven't always walked with Jesus. And there was a time in my life that I knew, being a grandson of bootleggers, that you give everybody the good stuff first. And by the time they get a little bit tipsy, it don't matter what they get. Y'all follow me? You see, y'all ain't always been in church either, have you? So this is the concept going on here. But there's a principle involved That God saves the best for last. And in your life, you'll find out that the end of your life may be better than the beginning. Amen. As you serve him. The point I'm trying to make here, and I'm not here to, to, um, I'm not here to condone drunkenness. I've preached on this before and had people leave the church because they thought I was promoting drunkenness. I'm not promoting drunkenness at all. The scripture says to be, uh, to not to be drunk with wine. Amen. It tells us to be careful. This thing, you know, nothing tells the truth like a toddler, a drunk, or a pair of spandex. (laughs) So you got to beware. You got to beware of being, you know, of getting drunk. I'm telling you, it'll mess you up. It'll ruin your life. So I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the math. Amen. You know what the math is? Three, uh, six water pots at 30 gallons, 180 gallons of booze. Uh, how, I'm telling you again, 
You don't know Jesus. You know, some of you thought, well, he could have brought in a couple of bottles and, and, and it would, would suffice, or he could have brought in a couple of gallons and said, here, try that. But no, he just goes over and abundant every time he does stuff. A hundred, you know, I figured it was over 900 bottles of wine. Now, that's more than Specs has got, my friend. Amen. He just flooded the place and said, here, let me show you. And it's even better now. And, of course, the Jewish wedding wouldn't go for a day. He could often go for a whole week. So he gave them plenty to last. And the issue is, when it's good like that, you sip it. You enjoy it. You don't gulp it down. You don't try to get drunk off of it. You enjoy the fragrance. You ever watch somebody drink uh, them connoisseurs? Amen. They whoop that little bottle around like that. (laughs) They sniff it like that. They take a little sip like that right there. I I ain't gonna tell how long 180 bottles, 180 gallons last. I'm sure every time they had communion for Sunday, they said, somebody go back here and get some of that good stuff, Jesus. Some of that Jesus wine. Amen. And took communion with. You don't know how long this thing lasts, but I'm telling you this. He's more than generous. I just touched some of your religious spirits right there, and I pray in the name of the Lord that you get over it before I finish. Hey, because again here, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to do the miracle. I'm just here to do the math. Hallelujah. He saved the best for last. Value yourself. Look what he says here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable? Everybody say valuable. Say, I am valuable. Say it again. I am valuable. I'm valuable, man. I, you know, when you quit valuing people, this is our problem with our election today. This is a problem with America and other places. We quit valuing human life. And when you start murdering babies, when you start giving justification to kill children, amen, and do things like that, then you quit the value, and there's no value on people anymore. Amen. Therefore, don't let misplaced priorities and worries stop a healthy relationship with our king and his kingdom. You know, the virus exposed our lack of trust in God. I'm just going to tell you that. It exposed our lack of trust in God. We were afraid somehow because of what we were hearing that this virus was going. It, it, I, have, I know more people that have had this virus that have overcome it over and over and over and came through it, amen, and realized it. And, you know, but it's the fear of. It's the fear of what's going to happen. So it exposes it. Amen, and also the fear of death. He said it's not, it, it's not life more than just, uh, it, it more than just life. In other words, we value I value living. I I value abundant life. But the older I get, the less fear of death I have. Amen. And somebody said, well, Pastor, I've been on the brink. I I live on the brink. Amen. I understand that it could happen. Amen. But we are much more valuable than the birds God feeds. And with being valued, you got to value yourself. And then then you got to accept yourself. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? One scripture says, or a single cubic to his height. I just want to be taller. I just want to be taller. I just want to be wider. I just want to be wider. I just want to be thinner. I just want to be thinner. Amen. And, 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 and I just want more hair. You can't get it by worrying. Amen. You can't get it by worrying. I can't add to my height. I, I is who I is. Amen, that's all I am. So I have to accept who I am. And when I accept who I am, then all of a sudden I start liking me. I like me a whole lot more. Amen. You can't add inches. Literally, the word cubic is 18 inches. The span of life. Can fear and anxiety lengthen one's life? Mm-mm. No. But on the contrary, amen, it can take it away. It shortens it. There's a timetable for anxiety. I looked this up a while back. Amen. At age 18, all you're concerned about is identity. That's why social media is so big. So big for kids. They love my identity, who I am, even trying to figure out who they are. Second is, uh, by age 20, your appearance. Why is that? Because you're thinking about marriage, thinking about career, things of that nature. Uh, by 23, good impression, making on people. By 26, you want to know what your career might be. By age 30, you start thinking about a salary. Amen. How am I going to do things in life? By age 33, job security. 38, children. If I ain't got kids before I'm 40, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, my last one, I think I was 39 when I got my last kid. Hallelujah. You know, I got a friend who's 59, fitting to have a baby. I love that boy. I do. I love him. love his wife. I think God love you. But the last thing I want to do is be 80 years old pushing my kid going over to his graduation. Mm-mm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'll leave that alone. That's for him and, and them. 41, purpose in life. What's my purpose here? By 45, you think about health and peace. 
Amen. It's amazing. When you, you get to a place in life when it's about health and peace. I just want to be healthy. I just want the peace of God in my life. You know, the thing is, worry can bring you into a breakdown. You ever had a nervous breakdown? I have. I, I've got, as a pastor, I've had a breakdown. Amen. I mean, a, a, a anxiety hit me. Worry hit me, Ken. I found myself under a desk. I was shaking. I, I, I didn't know. I, I, it's just like it overwhelmed me. And I'm thinking, what is this? I'm a preacher. And I realize it, it's the same faith that, that can pull me out and fear can drive me in. So I got to have faith in God. But listen, when it comes to health, make sure you use that as one of your subjects. You may think you're well now. But wait. There's something going on in you. Oh, you know what it is. And some of you have been doing that self-diagnosing. You've been Googling your, your, your stuff. Amen. To see what you got. Come on, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Because you, you're concerned about it. You know, here's what my thing is. If I go get tested for something, and I, you know, already say, say, say I got the flu. If I got the flu, I usually stay home until I get over it. Well, you go get tested. Why do I need to go get tested if, if there's nothing they can do for me? Well, that way you can't spread it. Well, hold on. What do you mean if I can't spread it? Well, you, you, you may be asymptomatic. Well, hold on. What if I'm asymptomatic? I, I talked with a, a nurse. She told me, she said, Pastor, if you're asymptomatic, you, you can't hardly even give it to anyone unless you French kiss them. You got to sneeze on them or cough on them. But if you're asymptomatic, you don't sneeze or cough. Somebody give me some common sense in this house. Amen. Well, anyway, let's get back to over here. Because I'm telling you, ch chances are you're coming down with something. Amen. Just for a minute. A after all, you know, uh, you, don't you know, we don't have enough uh, corona flu vaccine to go around. New York City's going to get it all. And, amen. And God knows, uh, breathing this reconditioned air in this church without a mask is a formula for sickness. And, and don't forget while you're at it that we do have the bird flu and the swine flu and the mad cow disease and West Nile and salmonella and, and, and staphylococcus is all over this place. Amen. And then we got Walter in the White House. We got a reason to be scared. So let no day pass without crying over spilt milk. Amen. Consecrate yourself. Stay in the place you're supposed to be in. Matthew 6, 31. So do not worry, saying, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I wear? The pagans run after this. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. You will, you know, you will only have peace in the area that you surrender to God. If I surrender my, my life, my future, if I surrender it over to him, uh, you know, because again, what is worry going to do? It's going to expand. It's going to distort. Amen. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. That's what worry does. Amen. It gives a small thing. I'm way ahead of you, Mike. Amen. A small thing. It is a big shadow. That's what it does. Hallelujah. Uh, any religion that focuses on the acquisition of things and the meeting of personal needs is a religion of pagans. One of the problems we have with our Christianity is we think we pray to God to get our food. Or we pray to God. I give God thanks for my food. Amen. I give God thanks for my home. I, I'm not chasing after God to get stuff. Amen. That's not the reason I'm after Him. If food, drink, clothing, money, car, house, and other material things are your priorities, then you're thinking and acting more like a pagan. Amen. No matter what you claim to believe, Jesus' mandate for us was to seek first His kingdom. Focus yourself on Him. Only, only people who don't know God are supposed to be worried about these things. I'll say it again. Only people that don't know God are supposed to be worried about these things. Amen. If you know God, I want you to know Him. I want you to fall in love with Him. I want you to realize that if I stay focused on Jesus. See, the thing with me is I'd gone to church as a young boy, but I didn't know God. I knew about God. I heard stories about God, but I didn't know Him. But to have a personal, to talk to Him, to tell him, Jesus, you know my failures, you know my lust, you know my passions, you know my addictions, you know the things I have fought over, you know the devils that have been chasing me. God, you, you've, you've, you, you've knocked away my addictions, you've whooped them devils for me. Amen. In the nighttime, I rest in you. I go to sleep at night knowing that if something happens, you got me. I, God, you know that, that, that even though I can even talk about alcohol and you turning water into wine, I'm no longer tempted with liquor. Forty years now, God, I've not had a drink. And I don't say it to my glory, but to yours. 
don't need it. You are my wine. You are my joy. You are my breath, my life. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow. has enough worry for itself. Church, today is all you have. It's all you need. Be honest with you. Today's all you can handle. You can't handle tomorrow. You don't know what's showing up tomorrow. So take care of today. I find myself in a place every 12 hours saying to myself, is it nighttime already? Where did my day go? I feel like I just got up. And, and look, again, I, I'm, I'll be 60 here in a few weeks, and I can't even think about like Sam and Ken and all you really old folk in here. <laughs> to how fast your days are ticking off because you realize you won't, you've got less left. And all of a sudden, grandkids become more precious to you. And great-grandkids, and life becomes worth living. It's time for a reality check. And not only this house of God, but every house of God in America and every believer in the world. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Fear results in the refusal to keep life in its proper perspective. When fear tries to overwhelm us, pause. We're moving into our Thanksgiving season. I'm excited about it because it reminds me to give thanks. My thanks, my faith... Uh, my trust, they all link together, amen, to drive away the fear and anxieties and worries in my life. So let's pause long enough to ask God, why am I afraid? Look, why am I afraid? Because the Word of God teaches me that if I call on the name of the Lord, I'll be saved, and if I'm saved, I'm going to spend eternity in heaven. So why am I afraid that something could happen to this body? Why am I afraid, wondering what's going to go on in my life? Where are my priorities? Am I giving my children and my grandchildren fear? Am I putting anxieties in their life when they see mama worrying and daddy full of anxiety? Am I passing on a generational curse into their life? Or by faith, am I standing against this thing and I'm not acting like it's not there? The Red Sea is there. Daniel's lions are there. A Goliath is there. There is a virus. There is economic downturn. There are problems out there. There is uh, isms all over the place. It's out there. But why can't I stand against it and say, I'm a child of God. I value myself. I trust God. I believe it for the very best. I'm not going to let this thing consume me. I've done my best. Amen. Listen, I've done my best the last few years with floods that have come. This has been the hardest year of my life to pastor with this virus. Loving people for all these years and teaching us to overcome and spell faith, R-I-S-K, only to watch people shrink back and listen to what's on TV and make them not live their life anymore. I'm telling you, I'm going to stand on the Word of God. I'm going to stand on Matthew 6. And if you don't like me, well, my goodness, I don't think you like Jesus either. Whoo, that's deep right there. Well, Pastor, I can hate you and not hate him. Okay. But what about his word? Don't you worry. What about what Paul said? Anxieties. Amen. Don't, don't. Pray. Don't you worry. Pray. And the peace of God will pass all understanding. Amen. Fight. Fight. Fight your worries. Trust God. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Woo. Lord, I pray it's a super spreader today. That people will leave this place of Matthew 6 burning inside them. That they'll seek first the kingdom of God and all your righteousness. And all the things they need will be added unto them. I thank you for everyone in this house that has overcome. God, not only have they overcome viruses, they've overcome racism, they've overcome sexism. God, they have overcome the ceilings in this life to make it the floor on which they now stand. I thank you for faith that moved us through life. 
helps us stand and believe you for the very best. I thank you for the mercies that flow down from heaven that met us that were new this morning. I stand on the word of God, Lord, and I dispel fear in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for all your mercies. If you've been away from God, throw your hand up right now. If you're watching online, you send me a message, let me know. These hands that are lifted, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Let faith rise in my heart. I accept you as my Savior. My Lord and my King, I bless you on this day, this glorious day, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God praise in here. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. You still love me? I'm checking your eyes right now. I'll pass. If I don't love you, I won't be here next week. <laughs> Let's out of town. Didn't you be here the week after? Got you, D. I know HD's in a deer stand. Hallelujah. I'm telling my freezer is going to be filled, David, before this winter is over. Thank you, Lord. Huh? You got to stay awake and see a deer. You don't think he's he's watching me right now? I promise you, he's watching me right now. Amen. Listen, guys, in your seats there are tithe and offering envelopes. Those that are watching online, the reason you're watching online is that six years ago, we purchased what is known as a TriCaster. That thing's able to broadcast and send out to connect to you and also out to YouTube and other places for people to get the Word of God. It's very important, particularly in this season, that people are able to see the Word of God online. Amen. Because of that, this thing is, uh, let me ask you this question. In the last six years, how many of you have replaced your cell phone? Throw your hand up. Six years. Last six years. How many of you have replaced your cell phone? Okay, now hold that hand up a little bit more. Let me do it again. One, two, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand. Do you know cell phones are anywhere from five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars? Twelve hundred dollars? Amen. Two hundred if you're old. <laughs> Older. Older, my bad. Amen. I, but let me just say this. This TriCaster cost us over $15,000. And it's breaking. Uh, it's got stuff in it I don't even understand. Dennis understands it. Others understand. I don't understand it. But that's what it cost us last time to, to buy it. Amen. So we're going to have to replace it in the next month or two because we're limping. They keep patching and patching. So I'm believing God that you guys will understand how important it is for us to get this word out to the world. Amen. And to keep putting this word out. So I'm asking you to give over and above. You say, well, Pastor, you know what? I can take care of that right now. If you want to take care of that right now, we appreciate it. Amen. But every little bit is going to help toward this, and a whole lot is going to help toward it if you can give a whole lot. Amen. We'll be doing this over the next few weeks and months, but it's something we're going to drive toward so that we can keep getting the word out. Amen. I believe, I believe the world needs to hear this message. Amen. And if you knew my heart, you know I'm not a mean guy. I love people. Amen. I, I, I've wrestled with this thing. It's been a hard 10 months to navigate through this, through having outdoor services and doing things. But, you know, it, it, Joseph and I and all us guys, we talk quite a bit about this. But the bottom line, we've been together for 10 months every morning. We gather. But life has not changed for us. We did not allow this to change our life and how we live. We still go out amongst people. We still, if I can get in the hospital, I get in the hospital. Amen. If I can visit somebody, I go visit somebody. Uh, doing weddings and funerals, whatever it takes. Uh, I just, I just kind of refuse to allow this to stop my way of living. Amen. I got to live life. I don't. I, I got so much left. I got. I got to live it. Amen. And I don't. And when you quit living this life, it's over. And when you don't have purpose for tomorrow, you're in trouble. So you got to keep having purpose. You got to keep leaning on the Word of God. Amen. So if you got your envelope there, make sure you fill that out. Put your tithe and offering in. I know most, a lot of you over here give online. I thank God for that. But let's continue to do that. Now, uh, David, I'll go ahead and mention this so you don't, don't need to come up here. There's only a few things. But on Tuesday night, there's prayer meeting. Amen. And it's been powerful in here. I keep hearing good and good uh, word. And I thank you because you ain't worrying, you're praying. Amen. So in here at 7 o'clock, where two or more are gathered together. Uh, our first, our youth, you going to do it this week? Okay, I'm going to let you know. This, 
Tuesday night, teenagers. We want our teenagers here. David and Tony will be here. Amen. They're having a youth service on Tuesday night. Amen. So not only is there going to be a prayer meeting in here, but the youth will be meeting in the back. So we want the teenagers in here on Tuesday night at 7. Right, Dave? We're going to do it at 7 o'clock. Amen. And then first week, midweek, there he is. That's my pastor right there. Pastor Mike Van Bre- we're gonna have. I'm going to ask you to bring dumplings and soup and stew and things like that. And after church, we're going to have supper with the pastor. Amen. We're going to gather. With- but Pastor Mike is in an s- absolute revival right now. He has got uh, into a university, and he's mentoring college students. How I many know what? We got to do this. We got to. And he, he, he spent uh, seven hours, he told me the other day. Just mentoring students there. There's revival going on on the campus. Amen. They're coming to his church. Hallelujah. Good things are happening. So he'll be with us on a Tuesday and a Wednesday night. And I'll be honest with you. Tuesday night will be different than Wednesday night. So it's kind of like a mini revival for you to be here on Tuesday and be out in New Caney on Wednesday. It's going to be that good. And December the 12th, stable in the saddle. If you've not taken this class, I want you to take it. We will be doing it out in New Caney. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. This is a firm foundation course. I'm going to take six weeks and shove it into three and a half hours. Amen. So there'll be a booklet for you to, to pick up, but I first want you to sign up. No cost to it, but it's to help me and you get to talk. For you to ask questions. How do we start? Why do we believe what we believe? Pastor, where did you come from other than your mama? Amen. So that's going to happen. So sign up in the back. If you've not had this class, stable in the saddle. We call it sits. Amen. It'd be important for you to do. Amen. And let me just mention again with David. Make sure you show up here Tuesday night. Bring your teenagers to church. It's not going to be no longer than an hour. Amen. You, they'll be in here praying, and the youth will be back there meeting. So be here on Tuesday night. Amen. Would you stand with me? Everybody good? Full of faith, super spread, your faith, amen. I'm going to tell you, when you have faith in God, people know it. And they're not, they're not scared to be around you. They love you. And you're serving a generous Jesus. Again, it was his idea to get six 30-gallon water pots. It blows my mind when I read that story. Amen. He's not condoning it, but he said, okay, mama, need it. It's a, it was custom. They drank, they drank wine there more than they drank water. The water was bad. Amen. If not, they'd have gave them six, they'd gave them uh, 180 gallons of water and said, here, just drink water. Your water's filtered. Quit using that scripture as your excuse to be stupid. <laughs> Got to get an amen. But uh, 900 bottles of wine. Hallelujah. Well, you talk about the generous Jesus. Amen. Mama, mama had to go, that's my boy. That's my boy right there. Now, watch out, world. Here he comes. And I'll say it again. He does save the best for last. Amen. The best. So don't think your, your days are over. Believe God, Terry, for your best days. Amen. You got to keep believing God. Hallelujah. As we give today, we're believing God for? Come on. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. All right, get out of here.